So when ASRock sent over their new desk mini for the Intel side of things, I said to myself in that review, I would love to see an AMD solution because it's kind of like a MOBA, right? If you guys have played MOBA games when they drop a new hero and then everyone wants to play that new hero, that's what the desk mini is. He's that new hero. Everyone just wants to play him. The Intel one, unfortunately, is like that hero that, you know, has kind of been out for a long time. People are like, mm, don't really know what's new about this thing. But regardless, we've got the new hero here on the desk. It supports the Ryzen 5 2400G and 2200G, as well as supporting some of the normal Ryzen CPUs if you wish to use it as an AFK standalone uh, machine. Regardless, today we're gonna to be taking a look at this $150 unit. You can currently get it on Newegg. They do ship worldwide because in Australia, I can't find it up for sale anywhere. I think ASRock haven't distributed in the Australian channels. But at this price, you get something that weighs in at 940 grams bare bones. If you add a CPU cooler, which we're gonna to try today, add this uh, stealth cooler on there because it's gonna have much better cooling performance than the included cooler. I think this is like the GE dual core cooler, which they do include in the box but it's performance on a four core, eight threaded Ryzen 2400G, sort of a little bit worried about that, uh, but it does have two slots of so dim memory support, so you can't use usual desktop memory on this. You have to use the laptop stuff because of the small form factor, which measures it at 154 mil by 155 mil by 80 mil depth. So it is a very small unit, comes in smaller than my hand. At the back, it's also got the option to vase and mount it to a monitor or vase and mount it to a wall if you wish to. That accessory isn't included in this unit. You can buy it for eight bucks, which is very cheap. You can also get a USB extension, USB 2 extension, which is another $8. So they got all these little extensions that sort of add to the cost, but it'll give you two extra USB 2s at the front. But speaking of the front, you get USB Type-C, USB Type 3.1, as well as your onboard audio out and mic jacks in at the front and your power button at the rear. You get DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 1.4, and a, a VGA out too as well as a USB 3.1 Type-A and a Realtek 1000 megabits per second NIC. So there's the install. It's super quick, super easy. It takes little to no time. Put the CPU in, put the RAM in and put your NVMe drive in and you're good to go. But in this case, we did have a little bit of trouble getting the Wraith Stealth in. I did have to bend this up a little bit and then it inserted. And uh, hopefully this fan doesn't cause any issues being so close to the mesh here. I'm hoping it's not since the edges of the fan are a little bit taller than the actual blade itself. But other things to speak about before we get into the BIOS is there are two SATA ports included as well, SATA 3. You can RAID these over RAID 0 and RAID 1. You've also got two NVMe drives, one at the front, but also one at the back. And you will have to pull the motherboard off the tray to access this. But other than that, let's jump into the bar, see how well we can tune this thing, and then try and run some games on it. So we're in the UEFI BIOS. It looks like any other ASRock BIOS, except it is missing two features which I actually do use regularly, and that's uh, internet flash and also the fantastic tuning software. Uh, but it's not to worry, you can still customize your fan speeds manually if you wish to, and you can also uh, update your BIOS just via USB downloading it from the website. But some really good things is that you can manually control the clock speeds, and you can also uh, overclock your DDR4 memory, which on the Ryzen APUs does make a big difference. But since we are using so dim memory, I think we just might try and go for like a 2933 megahertz at CL16 or something like that, just to get things boosted and smooth. But of course, since we don't have good uh, sodium in there, I think you can still get really good sodium. It's just, I don't have any good stuff on hand. And since it is sort of like a budget orientated option, I am gonna go for that sweet spot overclock. Uh, as for the CPU speeds, we're gonna leave that on auto for now, simply because we're using 120 watt brick, which I don't wanna overclock too high. And of course, it's a little motherboard, super little. But with that aside, let's get into some games and see how this thing performs.
So the benchmarking is all finished and what a very impressive little unit. We got 1080p Apex Legends on lower settings, but it's still got 56 average FPS, 48 minimum. So very well controlled. And the problem is I had to use fraps this time because apparently right as I started benchmarking this thing from about 15 hours ago, there was this bug where River Tuner just fails to open anymore. So I don't even know what's going on there. So we used Fraps, minimums were okay. Apex Legends was fine at 1080p, but uh, that's a big difference compared to the Intel variant, which couldn't even play 30 FPS at 720p. So there's that night and day difference between the AMD version, the APU, and the Intel HD graphics. So the Firestrike scores will show this too with a graphics score of 3000 and a physics score that's going pretty much near 10,000. So nothing's being hampered by this motherboard except my own so dim memory, which unfortunately could only go up to 2,666 megahertz, even though you're able to get it much higher uh, with the limits being pretty much unrestrained with a 1.2 and 1.35 volt choice in the BIOS. So you will want to get some better sodium memory if you are enthusiastic about getting the most performance out of the 2400G or even the 2200G. But in this case, it still gave us a smooth experience. Dota 2 was getting over 60 FPS on 1080p, 100% screen resolution, medium settings. So that did really well. So I was very impressed with this unit when it came to its gaming performance. Uh, moving on with some other tests like 4K video playback, of course, that was smooth. We just tested with YouTube this time because last time I tested with Netflix in the Intel review. If you haven't seen that, I'll put that up here already. Uh, Netflix decided that it wouldn't stream on Aussie internet at 4K. So this thing will handle 4K video streaming absolutely fine. Though do keep in mind you are limited to a HDMI 1.4 out as opposed to a HDMI 2.0 out so that you won't get 60 FPS at 4K. But I think the APU could handle that. So if there's any feedback for ASRock, I would like to see them improve on the uh, HDMI 2.0 upgrade with this particular unit in the next iteration. But in terms of the VRM temperatures and also the APU temperatures themselves, uh, with this cooler on, it just managed to fit as we said before, but the temperatures were well controlled. We got the node temperatures up to 93 degrees in a 26 degree ambient environment, and the CPU went up to 58 degrees from the tin sensor itself. T in. Tin. Tin, 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 tin. And the thermal imaging camera showed that the ventilation with the mesh side and front uh, was allowing the unit to breathe itself, using up about 85 watts in Ida64 on the stress test, and then 25 watts idle roughly. And then we went to a heaven benchmark. It was using around 70 watts. So pretty good temperatures considering the wattage is going to 85 watts. So I was very impressed with this unit and its ability to ventilate heat. And going through some more rounds of tests here, USB 3 speed transfers on my Kingston SSD drive were showing over 300 megabytes, so they're absolutely fine, as well as the internet speeds on the Realtek that was getting over 100 megabytes per second copy transfers. And then the last tests were the onboard audio. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. The onboard audio out is decent. I mean, below 10 Hertz, we only got an eight decibel roll off. After that, it was actually a pretty smooth line, but the mic in port itself was showing some serious uh, worries. So basically, don't use the mic in port for any serious audio recording because the 30 decibels and the plus 100 volume was just showing like real inconsistencies and then switching between it was jumping. So, I mean, it is a sort of cheaper solution for the mic in port and that's understandable. It's a desk mini uh, and the audio out is good too. So there was no problems really with the crossover as well, the cross talk. Anyway guys, there it is for the Desk Mini A300 from ASRock. The 2400G is just going hard in this thing. The memory speeds, they're able to go higher, but unfortunately I've got the two same DDR4 mismatch RAM sticks that I used in the Intel variant, which if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put the link up here for it. Uh, unfortunately, the team group memory they sent out, one of the sticks was faulty, so I couldn't use that for this review. And you don't want to use single channel when, you, when you're using an APU because you'll just have uh, lower speeds and real worse performance. You do want to use dual channel and you do want to get those memory speeds as high as possible. So if you're really enthusiastic about this, you can raise the voltage in the BIOS from 1.2 volt to 1.35 volt on the memory side of things. And if you do get some really good SODIM kits with XMP profiles or whatnot, 
then you should be able to get even better performance than I showed in the video here today. But as it stands for 150 bucks, this thing has checked every box that I'd want it to. It's a real solid little unit besides that mic in port, but again, it's $150 and I'm sure pretty much anyone out there is not gonna really worry about the mic import. You got the HDMI out too for the audio. If you're audio purist, you can use, I think, HDMI to optical out extractor as well, if you're that uh, concerned about it. But other than that, everything checks out. I hope you guys enjoyed the review for the Ryzen A300 desk mini. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below what you think of it. Are you in the market for one or what would you do with one of these? As there is another YouTube, I think, ETA Prime, who has tested this with emulation, and it does check out really well. So it's good for using for emulation if you wish to use it for that. Uh, and yeah, it just checks out in general. I'm really impressed with this unit. And yeah, there's also not much to say as well as, oh, one thing, there is the M.2 NVMe. You have to use a PCIe M.2. You can't use a SATA M.2, otherwise it won't boot. So do keep that in mind, the two uh, PCIe NVMe's uh, one's on the front, one's on the back of the unit. They only support PCIe NVMe. So it's one thing to look out for, but other than that, this unit is rock solid from ASRock, or should I say ASRock solid. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. <laughs> and that's about it guys. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoy this content enough, you may wish to consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification too. Tech Guest City on Instagram as well if you want that latest inside scoop. I'm posting up some stories, behind the scenes stuff too. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.